We can inspire ourselves from our traditional culture and values, but we should also keep on creating, being innovative. The most in interesting part about learning Chinese is the character. Actually, very much like uh, Jiaozi, Baozi. Um, yeah, I think that's my favorite. You know, there's a, uh, an author that's called, uh, that is, uh, his name is actually, I think, Liu uh, Suqing, Suqing, I hope I say that right, uh, who wrote a book uh, that was turned into a movie. Uh, it's called The Wandering Earth. So, to be honest, it's a bit difficult. Uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's very different from French in many ways. You have the tone system, you have the grammar, which is very different. But I think for me, the most different part is the characters, uh, because obviously we don't have the same system in French. Uh, but I actually think that the most in interesting part about learning Chinese is the characters also, because uh, you know when you when you actually look into how the characters, how the system has evolved, uh, it tells you a lot about the philosophy, the history of the of the Chinese language, of the Chinese culture. Uh, so I enjoy it uh, very much. Well, the pronunciation is not easy, obviously, but uh, I think uh, uh, you know uh, people forgive you when you're a foreigner and the tones are not perfect. Uh, but uh, uh, writing, you know, it's 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 another story. It's very difficult when you don't know it. Uh, it's it's very difficult to do. Uh, I can try to write pinyin on my uh, on my cell phone, for example. Uh, if I recognize the character, it's okay. But uh, I don't think I'll ever be able to actually write full sentences by hand. Uh, that's uh, uh, far far ahead of me. Well, the m most immediate goal, obviously, is to communicate with people. Since now I live here, and uh, and you know, in your everyday life, obviously, it's uh, it's very useful. And also, even when people speak uh, some English, uh, it's uh, or French, uh, it's not the same kind of contact. Uh, so I, I really want to be able to interact with people. But uh, in any language, I think that uh, it's it's very good to be able to read a book in the language because uh, then you get a grasp of the culture, uh, which you you don't we can't really get when you read a translated books. Uh, it's uh, there are excellent translations, but you don't get the poetry, you don't get the sound of the music of the language. So uh, at some point, I would love to be able to do that. Uh, we'll see if I make it, but I'll try. You know, in, in recent years, there's been uh, more and more people who, who learn Chinese, uh, and more and more schools in France that teach uh, Chinese lessons. Yes, um, but um, you know, it's uh, uh, obviously it's it's difficult and. Uh, some of these students, uh, uh, they have to come to China to, to learn. So yes, there's definitely an interest and uh, we, we hope we can uh, promote it uh, in the future. Both countries are very attached to their language. Language is part, a strong part of their identity. Uh, but I think, you know, the, the thing that mostly strike, strikes me is uh, that we actually, both of our countries love to eat. Uh, you know, we love our food and uh, that's a very uh, strong point in common. Uh, I think both Chinese and French people like to eat, like to cook. I like to talk about food, uh, and uh, the one thing that uh, strikes me in, in Beijing is how many restaurants there are. Uh, you know, there are restaurants of all kinds all over the city, uh, which uh, you know I, I think uh, it will take me years to discover. Actually, very much like Jiaozi, uh, Baozi. Um, yeah, I think that's my favorite. Well, I think uh, traditional culture, of course, is a, a strong part of all of our identities and all of our uh, backgrounds. So uh, it, it kind of uh, uh, orients our values and uh, I think in China obviously there's a, a very strong traditional culture uh, you know uh, that people can actually turn to when they want answers and I think uh, it's very interesting and it's something we should really learn lessons from you know how to respect nature how to uh, uh, be one with our environment uh, but I think you know we should have a, a balanced approach because traditional culture can be a uh, can help us, but, but there are also issues that are specific to our times. Uh, so uh, we can inspire ourselves from our traditional culture and values, but we should also keep on creating, being innovative. I think culture is a process, you know, it's never set in stone, it's always dynamic. So uh, we take from here and there and we keep on, on moving forward. I like to actually uh, read some Chinese philosophers because I think uh, this conception of our role and our, our position in, in, in our environment, in our nature, it, it tells you that actually this subject has been going on, uh, has been part of our uh, discussions for centuries, you know, if not millennia. So, uh, uh, you know, we're not inventing anything new. The question is, uh, what do we do uh, to concretely uh, act in the world, you know? And uh, the, those people, our are, uh, classical philosophers, can help us find the right, uh, the right direction, but then we have to act. Well, I think 
China is, uh, has a very actually diverse and, and uh, rich culture, uh, obviously, but uh, I think uh, all countries should embrace their traditional culture because it's very rich. In China, you know, you have sites that are uh, incredible, uh, and traditional sites are incredible, traditional literature and philosophy that are really uh, uh, fantastic, but you actually also have a, a very vibrant uh, and dynamic contemporary scene. Uh, you know, when I arrived here, I I was told there are more than 5,000 museums in China, uh, which is, I think, the it has increased by 14 uh, times in uh, in 40 years, which is an unprecedented uh, rate of growth. Uh, so, you know, it's a country that's very uh, moving forward, moving at fast pace. That's uh, an image that uh, uh, needs to be shown to the world. That actually China is also a creative country that has, uh, you know, that has original thinking, original thoughts, original works, uh, and that's a, a very important aspect. You know, every year we have uh, some important uh, events uh, that uh, kind of uh, give some rhythm to our cooperation uh, every year. So, for example, we're just starting today the, the French-Chinese uh, uh, Month of the Environment. Uh, so that's an important uh, thing. Then we will have another event, a festival, a cultural festival in the spring. Horizon, an important objective, will be 2024 because we will have the, we will celebrate the 60th anniversary of the French-Chinese diplomatic relations, uh, and we will also have that year, the year of French-Chinese cultural tourism, uh, which was postponed from a few years ago. Also, you know that uh, in 2024, there will also be the Olympic Games in Paris, right after the Olympic Games in Beijing. So there will be a lot of reasons to, you know, have some uh, great cultural events, which we are currently uh, planning and working on. We try to have hybrid events, we try to have, uh, you know, uh, uh, things by video conference. Uh, we also try to have to, to use our local resources because you have some French artists that actually still live in China and that have uh, things to say, Chinese artists that live in, in France. Keeping the, the, the cultural exchange between our two countries, it also, but we were talking about uh, uh, languages before, you know, I think it starts with that, you know, if people are interested in, in, in another country, they should try to learn their language. Uh, you know, it actually opens you a window onto another country without even moving from your, your, your couch, you know, you can, uh, uh, you learn Chinese from France, well, you can kind of dream about being in China and discover movies, discover TV shows, uh, meet new people listen to new music, so it's uh, it's very interesting and it opens you an entire new world. Uh, so I think that's a very good way to do. Uh, and you know, if any of your viewers are interested in, uh, in learning French, uh, obviously we can uh, we can help with that, you know, we give French classes, we can uh, uh, we give French cultural exhibitions. Uh, we're very strongly attached to the idea that uh, through language, through culture, you can actually uh, very much uh, uh, enjoy a strong cooperation. People should give it a try. It's, uh, I think it's, it's always fun to try. You know, the theme of, of this year's uh, edition is uh, our blue planet. Uh, so I'll talk about how, you know, we should avoid, for example, putting plastic into, um, into our oceans. Uh, we also talk about how we should be careful about what we eat because uh, we, uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you fish too much, at some point you, uh, uh, you challenge the balance of the ecosystem and the, and the ocean. Everybody can also uh, be more careful about what they buy, how they buy it. You know, sometimes you can, you can buy refurbished goods instead of buying new goods uh, when you don't actually need a new product, you know. Uh, so, we, for example, we will have a, um, some kind of market to, to teach people what, you know, used, used goods can actually sometimes be as good as new ones. Uh, so things like that, you know, you can, uh, uh, you can give it a try, see how it goes, and, you know, if it works for you, I think you can you put it into your everyday life, into your everyday routine, recycle, buy new goods, buy old goods uh, instead of new ones, and that's already contributing to the environment. For sure, there are actually some uh, Chinese science, fi science fiction uh, works that I think are very uh, interesting. You know, there's um, uh, an author that's called, uh, that is, uh, his name is actually, I think, uh, Liu Suqing, Suqing, who wrote a book uh, that was turned into a movie. Uh, it's called The Wandering Earth, and it's very interesting because through science fiction it kind of shows how fragile our planet is and that you actually need that the entire humanity has to join forces to kind of protect it. Uh, and I think it's very interesting because science fiction, I think, is, is a powerful means of uh, transmitting that kind of message. Uh, so that's something also that's very important because I think contemporary art is a very strong uh, way to express, uh, you know, uh, your commitment to the environment and to uh, the ecological cause.